and welcome to Cool Face Chat. We're so excited today. I can tell you I'm extremely pumped and I think I've been saying this the whole week. Uh, so for those who are joining us for the very first time, we'd like to welcome you to uh, our Cool Face Chat. And um, this is a chat that we invite men and women who've done tremendous things in their lives, uh, things that may have been you know, deemed impossible. So we allow these uh, men and women to come and chat with us and give us their, their background and their perspective. And uh, for, if you're joining us for the very first time, Kupi's Young Women's Network is an organization for young women, and our aim is to empower the young women, to inspire them, and to transform them, uh, for them to be leaders of their own personal development. And um, we, we, we do various activities, and one of them is um, you know, the leadership and uh, inspiration seminars, we have capacity building workshops. And actually, the Kupes chat, we used to have it in, you know, like in one gathering uh, where we'll have about 200, 250 young women. But because the world has sort of like changed, we, we, it's no longer business as usual, but we still had to find a way of having this conversation. So here we are. And now it gives us an opportunity to have a conversation with many more than the 200 or 250 that will be in that one room. So uh, please let us know where you are watching us from. So if you're watching us from Winilunga, from Kasama, wherever it is, Please tell us uh, uh, where you're watching us from. Tag your friends. Uh, do a watch party. You know, uh, like and share because this is going to be a fantastic conversation. So before we go any further, I just want to say a big thank you to our partners, uh, Sarova Hotel, where we are this morning, uh, this afternoon rather, and it's a beautiful, beautiful place. I would like to thank uh, MTN Zambia and of course Fortress Media. So. The world is no longer business as usual. Um, please, when you leave the house, wear a mask. Please take all the precautionary measures. COVID-19 is real. Wear a mask. Use hand sanitizer. Wash your hands. Practice social distancing. And if you can, if there's nothing you need to do outside of the house, please stay at home. We need you. We need each other. So let's look out for, for one another. So without further ado, today I have a... Uh, uh, a wonderful, uh, a wonderful woman. Uh, actually, my my woman crush every day. <laughs> She's been my woman crush from the time that I met her. Uh, this is a, a woman full of, like you know, indulged with wisdom, and uh, extremely cultured. Um, uh, I wish I could even say this in Bemba, but I'm trying not to. <laughs> I'm trying not to. Um, and 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 every time I have a conversation with her, like I always feel I need to know more. Um, and 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 the, I think I'm privileged, and perhaps a lot of people are privileged to have her in their circles. I'm personally privileged. Um, so today, our 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 guest is um, Madam Lengam Pundu. <laughs> I put in the pundu because we're going to ask a few questions after that. So I'll tell you this conversation. First of all, welcome, <laughs> welcome. Uh, the reason we're having this conversation, actually, well. I would like to say that she has been, um, you know, a, a very good support for Coupes. Uh, she's been guest of honor at our 2017 Coupes Young Women's Network Conference, and also she has been do, conducting our Friday shows. We have not Friday shows, actually Cultural Fridays, and it's amazing. After the girls leave that space, they're like, "Oh my goodness, I did not know that. I wish I knew that." <laughs> um, so what happened is a couple of weeks ago, I had posted something on my Facebook page and I said uh, please my young people when you're getting married just it would be courteous to just let your parents know that you're getting you know getting married and oh my goodness it was like we opened Pandora's box no this eh. and no but what comes first is it to do ballet or the other way around or <laughs> what is it is it really necessary and I tagged um uh, I, I call Aunt Menga I tagged her and it was like I think we need to have this this conversation and she's like yes we must and so here we are today finally to talk uh, about what I had opened up <laughs> <laughs> on my Facebook page so once again very, welcome very innocently yeah. very innocent because I'm just saying ah, no just tell us <laughs> when you're getting, getting married, married would like to know mm -hmm. or let people know so um, it was a very interesting. Uh, it was. It was it a was very, very interesting thread. Yeah, yeah very interesting mm -hmm. thread. With people had so many uh, concerns yeah. and opinions, and questions, and, questions. Yeah. and I thought it would be good for us to to have this conversation. So, 
one of the things before we get into to that discussion, one of the things that uh, you know you, you you've worn many many hats, mm -hmm. uh, but one of my favorite of them is the fact that you're an author, mm -hmm. and I was just telling you. Yeah, <laughs> you're an author, and and I put there's a book I wanted to come with, uh, the ones for 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 the problems. Mm -hmm. I wanted to carry that, but I left it on my on my table. Mm -hmm. And you're also co-founder of the Zambians Women Museum. Museum. Yeah. That one we'd like to talk about as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, if 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 you know, she's also the daughter uh, of a former vice president, mm -hmm. um, uh, Mr. Simon uh, Kapwekwe. So you you it's 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 many things, mm -hmm. um, but I'd, first of all. The last one was an accident. Which one? Being a daughter of <laughs> <laughs> my parents. <laughs> How so? I just found myself there. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't my achievement. But has, was it was has it ever been some kind of pressure? Of course, yeah. Be, yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a <laughs> it's a double edged sword. Let me put it that way. Really? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's a very pleasant experience. Sometimes it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. That people know you because of your name. I see. Or your father, or, you know, well, you know, in the political life of this country, and just like you, my favorite title of my father is not really politician; it's author. It's author, because yeah. Because he was an author, yes. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Uh, but also, was there any expectation for you to get into in the t political scene? Um, no. If if I th if my father were to come back, I think he'd be pleased. <laughs> 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 well, I think he was surprised and pleased because my father always encouraged me uh, to be a visual artist because because I could mm -hmm. um, draw. Um, so he always encouraged me, gave me papers, crayons, paints, whatever I needed to you know to keep drawing. And he uh, he kept he kept everything that I've ever drawn. When I go home, I find my little paintings from when wow. I was yeah. But, uh, he really encouraged me, and um, but my father made sure I understood that. Um, being an artist, because he was an artist, mm. uh, being an artist is something you're born, and therefore it's not something you can you can move away from. It's it's something you're born with, but you can always get another qualification to support that thing that you were born with. Mm. So when it came to going to school and going to university and so forth, my father was very adamant. You know, go to school, get your degree, get whatever, but remember too that you're an artist, and if that's what you want to do, that's what you must do. Oh wow! Yeah, so I got I got a lot of encouragement, which which sometimes I don't see in parents whose kids want to be artists. Um, you know, the the stress is you know you're not going to survive, which I understand. <laughs> but you know, encourage a child, but also give it some other tool that will you know that will help to, that child survive as an artist because we're born mm. with a gift that we must share. Because I just think so if. I think, first of all, I think artists are really brilliant people and um, um, crazy too. Yeah, I was going to say that, but <laughs> <laughs> brilliant people, very free spirited. Yeah. Um, and I think getting to a place where you have to sort of like thwart an artist, I think it tends to frustration, isn't it? Because it does. like putting an artist into, uh, into the medical field, for instance. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that must be, that, w that would be tough, but um, my favorite. Uh, medical artist, <laughs> if you want, is um, is um, is one that has even won an Angoma award. You know, because he writes really well. He's also an author, and um, and I remember once I was at UTH and he was on the ward and and um, we we started talking and he said, "Have you saved my number?" I said, "Yeah, I do have your number." And then I went. I said, "Yeah, I do have your number." I went to his number. I, I haven't saved him as doctor. I've saved him as author. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, because, because to me that's the side of him. I guess that's. Uh, but he's a you know brilliant doctor as well. So yeah, I think what I'm trying to say here is, is, is even for me, having one thing and having your talent and, and pursuing it, I think is is probably the best of both worlds. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we did talk about your book and the book that I, I thought I was going to bring today mm -hmm. was the one on the problems. Mm -hmm. And you had said something some time back. You said African problems are my life hack. Yes. Tell us about that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. You know the the. I think we underestimate the power of proverbs, and and I and I, I kind of panic <laughs> <laughs> when I see when I see us forgetting them. You know, in our tradition, um, you literally grew up learning proverbs. You know, mm. it, it was literally your your duty to learn as many proverbs as possible so you could pass them on, because proverbs um, are, are, are this kind of smallest package of of wisdom of insights of reminders 
of uh, pointers of so many things uh, in life that if you if you're equipped with a lot of that um, insight and knowledge and viewpoints you you get to to look at um, situations from very different directions mm -hmm. not just one and you are equipped with that so when you when something goes wrong there's in in Africa there's proverbs and proverbs about proverbs you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a proverb for everything because yeah. we needed every human being to have the tools to be able to look at something and analyze it as quickly as possible because proverbs also encapsulate a lot of information in a very small package mm, true yeah, true, yeah. True. so you can pass it very quickly mm -hmm. and you know I've, I've been to conferences where um, to summarize what I've said or what I'm about to say I just have a proverb and everybody understands <laughs> <laughs> that's how powerful yeah, they are yeah and um, I think for me they are also a very good um, psychological uh, tool because you, you don't get stressed you know what I mean you, you when you can analyze the situation or when you know that oh ah, this is normal you don't get stressed about things ah yeah okay, okay, because okay. you know oh okay this is something that oh it happens you know mm -hmm. this is normal you don't get stressed about it and think oh what am i going to do so for me um proverbs are really a life hack and mm. i think it's a it's an ancient life hack that we're losing as as, as human beings and which is just ma for me much more useful than going to therapy and lying on a couch <laughs> for 15 years just give me proverbs you know <laughs> just teach me some proverbs yeah i'll be good yeah <laughs> and I, I think what you've just said is is, is interesting like something that we, we we're losing and being an author and authors talking about having this conversation takes me back to it is a proverb it's an african proverb it says mm -hmm. if 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 the lion doesn't uh, learn to write will always glorify yeah or rather yeah. tell the story yes it will always glorify, glorify the hunter, the hunter. yeah yeah and, yeah. I, and I think that's and again without saying much that sound? Yeah, yeah. That sound. yeah so it, it sort of like explains everything in one it really does in one sentence in in one sentence yes. yeah it, it explains everything you mm -hmm. know and that's the, and that is the I think that is the beauty of proverbs because they 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 can really they can really you know get you over i mean like you know sometimes when i'm kind of like stuck or whatever it is there's a problem that i like which is you know watcha watcha na manu meaning that every day brings its own new ideas mm -hmm. you know every day is a new potentiality today even if i'm stuck tomorrow there'll be new ideas there'll be new things that will happen so you know i, I don't need to be stuck in today mm -hmm. tomorrow will bring something new so there's so much that so much mileage you get you get out of uh, proverbs psychologically mm -hmm. you know emotionally and, and mentally that I think it's, it's the it's the one ignored hack <laughs> that yeah. we should be pulling back because I, sometimes I look at all this stress you know sometimes I there's some things that I laugh about because I'm thinking mm. you know uh, sometimes I'm watching CNN or something watching Trump or somebody and I'm, I'm, I've got a proverb in my head to tell you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like this would solve America's this problem would solve America's problems like we know because yeah. they all understand but Ichalo, you know mm -hmm. if you, you know hey, it, if, if, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know don't, don't stress so much you know mm -hmm. yeah, people you know post-traumatic stress because of something there's 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 ways that that we can actually um get over some of these things mm -hmm. you know very quickly. very quickly so yeah it's um <laughs> hey, life hack yeah it is okay and the women's museum uh, yeah. what prompted that um i think i think <laughs> i think in, in in kind of again let me go back to my family um i think there's, there's there was always that thing that was kind of uh, ingrained in us if not if if something is going on or something is missing or something's gone wrong and it needs to be fixed if not you then who then who yeah mm. if you if you can't fix it then who um which kind of then you know kind of for me it gives me the the impetus i think if there's something that i'm passionate about and it's not there then then who's going to you know, I can't do the Boma Yanga Nepal stuff all my life. <laughs> it's, uh, it's if not me, then who? So one of the things that um, uh, we were having coffee with a friend of mine and uh, Samba Yonga, and we were like, you know, 
and I think it kind of like hit me, especially after my mother died, because my mother played a, a, a huge role in the struggle. Mm -hmm. But you really kind of want to hear about my father? Yes, yes. Yeah, and I was like, ah, but there were so many women like my mother who did so much, you know, but they are silent in our history, you know, so like, why, you know, so we thought, okay, so why don't we create a women's history museum, you know, mm -hmm. so that we make sure that women also uh, take their place in our historical landscape. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And, and so, if not me, then who? <laughs> oh, wow, wow. <laughs> and so we I, created I, the, yes. yeah, we created the Women's History Museum, and it's been a really, um, it's been a really exciting thing, I must say. It's been, it's been um, amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, we started. Uh, we started. The first thing that we did, we thought, how do we get the women? How do we get these women, the Zambian women, into 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 visibility? And so we partnered with Wikipedia, mm -hmm. and we trained about thirty-four young Zambians, because you know, t to post on Wikipedia, you you need to be trained, and you know, you need to know how to reference and all that kind of stuff. So we trained about thirty-four young people, went around the radio stations and asked Zambians, which women would you want to? learn about in, the, in, in our history. Um, so we paired it down to like uh, 100 women and then gave it to those 34 who had been trained by Wikipedia mm. to, to write uh, about uh, Zambian women and to research, write, reference everything correctly and post on Wikipedia. And um, that was interesting. Uh, and now if you go to Wikipedia, I think Zambia has got the most uh, posts in terms of wom women women, yeah. Yeah, mm. in Africa. Um, and and also we kind of started getting in, in, in <laughs> into battles, <laughs> really. Yeah, with Wikipedia because Wikipedia, um, you know, if, if if literally if it's not referenced by some European scholar or whatever it is, then it's like no 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 no, you know, you come. So we're like, hello, <laughs> you know, this is Africa. We yeah. have our own history and whatever. So we, it's kind of like we're, we're kind of pushing that fight as well on, on another level. <laughs> but wow. um, we found that it was it's necessary for us as Africans to also develop our own systems of referencing and documenting our history. Mm. Um, so that was one thing. Then um, HIVOS, we applied for a fund uh, to HIVOS to do um, animation to tell um, stories about women. We, got, we, we took a woman from each province, starting from about the 17th century to the 19th century. Um, and we did animations and that went really well yeah it went really well no, that one was really good and that was very it was exciting, really good yeah. it's mm -hmm. and it resulted in some really interesting things because uh, some people who watched it in <laughs> in the states called us and said also oh, but you have a physical museum and we said no we're a virtual museum at the moment and they said oh well, could we partner with you to to, to build a, a mm. physical museum and we said yes and um that was great now then of course we had we panicked about okay so where are we going to build it <laughs> <laughs> always agree don't, don't, don't. <laughs> and then don't think, think about it later you know, yeah. just think about the thing <laughs> later like okay so we thought like okay so anyway. anyway we managed to um, get into um, uh, an, an agreement with chaminuka mm -hmm. um that we can build our museum there oh okay because it's also very much uh because women uh, our history uh, and ourselves as women are very connected to to the environment and we wanted uh, to be in a space where we, where people can actually experience the connection of women to to their environment and, and how they historically have interacted with that environment, so that would be part of that. Um, so we, yeah, so we did get you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the people who who are, who the architects who were talking to um, have a, an office in Boston and one in Kigali and one in Cape Town, and they've been here like four times. To, to see the space and to plan with us and conceptualize. So we've kind of done the concept um, for, for the museum. Okay. Um, so that was, uh, that was like a brilliant thing, you know, that which came out of the animation. Out of the animation, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, and also said. just the fact that you, what you said earlier, uh, if not you, then who? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I could have, you know, I could have kind of said, uh, Let's go. How, why, why isn't the National Museum doing something about, about you know it, what I mean? Yes, yeah. Do it yourself. We've become partners with with all the museums. Um, in fact, as as the Women's History Museum, we even helped um, Motomoto Museum mm -hmm. in Imbala to 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 get funding. We reviewed their proposal to get funding from the British Museum. Oh wow! To study uh, back cloth. Yeah. So you know. Um, yeah, so we got into the museum space, <laughs> <laughs> and then um, yeah, then the, then the Swedish Ethnographic Museum, mm -hmm. um, 
also you know got in touch with us so we're doing a project with them we've we we, we together we applied to the swedish institute they've given us about two million kwacha to create a platform uh, what we found in the ethnographic museum is that the swedish that swedish museum has got a more than it's got about 600 and I don't know, 60, 652 objects, Zambian objects. Really? Yes, from the 1800s up to about 1967, um, which belonged to us, basically. <laughs> um, so we went there, we looked, uh, because there's a whole issue about repatriating you mm. know, objects from, from European museums. So we, we, th we thought, okay, no, the first thing that we do is let's create a platform, a digital platform, to repatriate those objects digitally mm. so that at least Zambians can start seeing start those objects. Seeing, yes. are, and they are beautiful objects. They're, they're very interesting objects. What we want to do is also make sure that every Zambian on mm. that platform, every Zambian can actually access that platform and look at the objects if they want to. Mm. So we're starting to do workshops from the village to the University of Zambia, literally, so that we, we design a platform that is accessible, that's for, that's everyone. accessible for everyone. Yeah, and also because we want to increase the, the knowledge about the objects. Uh, some of the objects in the museum, the, the Swedish don't even know what they are. Mm -hmm. So we need to increase the metadata on the on the objects, on the and object. who better than the people who actually use them, or who uh, whose history uh, evolves around those objects. So that's one thing. And the th and the recent thing now is that um, <laughs> is that after the animation, um, he was gave us more money to do season two. Oh really? Yeah? Yes. Okay. And before we even actually launched season two, they gave us more money to do <laughs> season three. <laughs> <laughs> and season three is uh, now uh, Malawi and Zimbabwe. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. So it's gonna go. Oh my yeah. goodness, this is yeah. fantastic. That, yeah. And that is what it's all about. We need mm -hmm. to be. We need to be able to tell our stories. Absolutely. Because if we don't tell our stories as as Zambians, as Africans, we mm -hmm. lose who we are, and that's very dangerous. And, and I think that is. Yeah. We we go back to the lion. Yes. And the hunter. Yeah. And the hunter, yeah. because then, yeah, we will never be. We'll never to know the lion story. Yes, we'll never know <laughs> the lion story. So, yes. uh, I mean, a big, a big thank you, and, and well done for being able to do that, especially that we are talking about about women. Um, uh, so if you if you just joined us, welcome to uh, Kupe's chat. Uh, please tell us where you're watching us from. We're having a conversation today with um, Madame Mulenga uh, Kapwepwe, who's an author and uh, you know just a fantastic woman when it comes to <laughs> your dog's body. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said at the beginning of of the conversation, was that uh, this what resulted in us me posting something on Facebook regarding mm -hmm. you know. Um, an engagement mm. so uh, and, and and we're going to now start talking about that because i'm sure everybody's itching because mm. i know mean, maybe someone was telling me i wish i was the one on as one of the participants <laughs> to discuss this i said no we we're just having a conversation yeah. so yeah so we can sort of like get ourselves to stand obviously i know we're not going to finish there's so many questions mm. but obviously the reason we're here is to, to start off with one mm. of them mm -hmm. um and then I, I, going forward, I know that we're going to have there's something that we like to do, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll possibly create a package for for that. So the the, 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 the young women there and the women, because mm. some who really have no clue why certain things are done and the importance yeah. um, of that. Mm. Um, so um, tradition and, and, and culture, mm. uh, where are we? Have we have we completely lost it? Have we been lost in translation? Where are we as as a country? Yeah. Um, well, the thing about culture, culture happens at many levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so there's, you know, there's this universal culture, which is, which is uh, the thing that we all share as human beings. Mm -hmm. You know, I think in every culture, uh, in on this globe, um, people practice marriage in one form or the other. People have music. People dance. People. There's, there's some universals that are just every, every everywhere. everywhere they happen because um, one culture is rooted in biology so there's you can't <laughs> you can't not <laughs> have a culture because you know the reason why we dance is because uh, our bodies um, our bodies the way we the way we taste food is the way our bodies taste rhythm mm, that's mm. we enjoy that that's why I enjoy watching you dance or you enjoy watching me dance or we enjoy dancing together mm, mm. because it's a it's a natural rhythm that we actually enjoy when our bodies move in rhythm oh okay yeah the music adds the you know <laughs> <laughs> the spice um so there are those universals that every um uh, group of human beings actually actually have you know we, we, you might not recognize marriage if you walked somewhere 
because it doesn't look like it doesn't how you look do like it. Yes. yes. Okay. But it is actually marriage. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because biology dictates that we we mate. That mm. you find a mate and you produce children. Okay. Yeah. So when you're when you're going to the church and people are getting married, what you're actually celebrating is a biological impulse. <laughs> <laughs> it's a biological impulse. It's, a <laughs> it's a all that white dress and what what what. It's just covering up what biology wants. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So there's that. But there's also national culture. There's culture of ethnic groups. There's even culture in the home. Mm, mm. There, there are things that in your house you do. Yes, that so in another, another house, home it yes, they don't do. Yes. yes, okay. And then there's personal culture. Mm. There's some things you do that I don't do and things I do you don't do. Because mm. that's my personal culture and you have your own personal culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the thing about culture is that it can, culture can, can move. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so when I talk about uh, culture even just being in a place, I grew up in Chilenje, mm -hmm. and uh, we people in Chilenje thought the people in Matero did not have certain, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we were the it. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, even before you even go there, even yes. just the, the, the way, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm brought up, born and bred in, in Kitwe, mm -hmm. Copper Belt, yes. where you tend to think there's something about yes. being Copper, copper that, culture, that you won't yes. be able to, they won't get you. No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so there's there's all those patches and layers of culture that that we exist in, but the thing about culture was is also it's it, um, culture sometimes will will uh, infuse itself into so it's inherited. Culture. It can be inherited. inherited yeah. It can it can come and overtake you and overwhelm you mm. as as a lot of the Western culture has done <laughs> I to us. Yeah, yes, it, it uh, some cultures are very aggressive. Some cultures are very docile. Some cultures will cross a boundary. Some cultures will not cross a boundary no matter how they are pushed. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So okay. yeah. So so it's it's a very organic thing. Culture is very organic, um, and it can kill other cultures. Yeah. Yes. One culture. Yes. One culture can <laughs> kill another culture. Yes. Mm. yes. Culture can die, but sometimes it can also be resurrected. It can be, yeah, brought back to life. Okay. It can be resuscitated. Um, the thing that makes a culture strong and live uh, in a healthy way, I think is being conscious of what your culture is. Okay. Yeah, that mm -hmm. way you don't throw away things without thinking about it. You examine things more deeply and you know which parts to, to, to switch off or switch on without destroying the whole part. Yes. And I tend to think that we're, we're a little bit too unconscious. <laughs> yeah, about, about, yeah. About our, our own yes, culture. Yes, yes, yeah. Because you just said something very interesting. There's, there's some cultures that are extremely pushy. Yes. And, and, and I think I remember, I, I read this somewhere. It said, for, for you to fight an oppressive culture, mm. you have to celebrate your own, like Absolutely. highlight your own for yeah. you to be able to, yeah. to, to, to. So when it comes to so there's the culture side and tr now traditions. Traditions are part of of the practices of culture mm -hmm. and so uh, for a culture to manifest itself traditions is one avenue that cultures manifest mm. so we talked about marriage so to manifest marriage there are all these traditions that have to that have yeah mm -hmm. that have to manifest themselves so that we know that's a wedding uh -huh. that's how we know <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> so now with, with, with so now the the, the aspect of, of marriage obviously mm. there's uh, mm culture uh, we ha uh, we have been overtaken by another one yeah. in terms of how we we celebrate yes uh, marriage but yes. uh, fortunately there's still some traditional aspects that are still maintained yes. uh, and which is a fantastic thing so now uh, the, the post this post was um, about um, engagements yes. so now it's can, can <laughs> we understand because um, I mean it's, it's, yeah. My, my my daughter was even saying so they won't be surprised i'm like oh so there will be no surprise <laughs> element here so um how does it work so somebody okay. was asking what comes first is it the engagement or utubale and also before you answer that one yeah um are these uh traditional practices still relevant today do we still need them as as, as i said mm -hmm. one there's no there's i didn't say this but let me say it now there's no such thing as a cultural vacuum Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. If something dies, something else will take over. If something is, you know, 
you know, you, you have to understand that, you know, what, sometimes when I sit in the, in the archives and I'm looking through the records and things like that, it's interesting how the missionaries, for example, took marriage, our marriage. Mm -hmm. For them, they kind of like just said everything must go and it must all be their way. Mm. Yeah, so it must be the Christian marriage that, that counts. With the, uh, the colonial government, the colonial government looked a little bit more about, no, but how do these people actually do it? Mm -hmm. so, they, so they would, in a court case, they would also ask, how did you marry? So if the person said, oh, uh, whatever, they would recognize that as marriage. Mm -hmm. And those, so those, again, as I was saying, sometimes another culture will come and force you to, to do something the way it does that thing okay yeah yeah sometimes another culture might even recognize what you do and say okay that's okay um some of the like ukulang and busa and all that stuff and i'm talking bimba culture were banned by the missionaries for example but that's part of the marriage process mm -hmm. yeah so aspects of even the traditions of marriage were kind of um distorted um in some cases supported for a time and then and then dropped dropped okay. yeah so w w let me say this f from the outset that for us which is something that that post was kind of <laughs> hinting at at the change i guess for us in our culture and it doesn't matter where in zambia you come from mm. for us traditionally marriage is not about two individuals it's about families mm -hmm. it's about families coming together so in that in that respect you can't just the two of you decide we're getting married <laughs> 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 because <laughs> the, what happens to the rest of the clan and the, you know because the marriage is about putting putting two families together mm -hmm. because from putting two people together remember the biology that we're talking mm -hmm. about there'll be children and those children there must be very clear lines about who owns them, who does what, who is who, you know, all the kinship roles, uncle, chinshiva, ayama, vana, all those things come into play. So marriage was not, you know, down on bended knee, I'm proposing, I give you a ring, and <laughs> then we, yeah, you know, put it on Facebook or whatever. <laughs> uh, it was a serious negotiation between families. Mm. Um, that is something that I think is largely dying because uh, young people come and they've already decided, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what they're doing. And, uh, you know, they probably opened a, a hashtag for their wedding and whatever. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, the social media side is sort of, you know, um, Fortress has taken the engagement rings. <laughs> 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 By the time they're coming to you, it's really just to inform you, and mm -hmm. you know this is the budget and whatever. If they've got the money, they will even like you know don't worry about this. We've got we've, it. We've, everything yeah, is we've sorted. got it sorted. Yeah. We've got the dates. This is the, you know, which is kind of just not the way <laughs> it would have been done in the past. In the in the past, um, and I'll I'll kind of stick to to to, to the member culture because I've got more credentials there. The young man uh, who wants to get married, and sometimes it was the family that said, "Hey, hello." <laughs> <laughs> go and, go and use time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, probably they would have even been able, they would have been looking around for a young lady, like, mm, I think, uh, you know, mm -hmm. because they were also looking at things like, mm, is that family, you know, can we join ourselves to that family? You know, there was all those considerations of... I, I think that's very critical, isn't it? Yeah. Because it is. it's in, <laughs> and in as much as the two of you are going to come like the two, yeah. but you are going to come from, from families. Yes. So also the families that you come from, it's, it's very critical because then how do you... Yes. How do you mesh those two families? Because yeah. there's always a meshing of families, especially through the children of that marriage. Mm -hmm. So people wanted to know, are they okay? Are they whatever? So... Um, so once the young man or the family has said, no, this young man must now get married, mm -hmm. that's when they got the shibukombe and okay. said, you know, the, the, the young man uh, has told us or we have decided, <laughs> because in those days they could decide for you, <laughs> that yes, that that's family, is that a girl, that's the one he wants or mm -hmm. that's the one we want. And then the shibukombe would go to that, um, to that family to now present in the best light mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the virtues of that young man and the family and 
because they had, those people had to be comfortable with the young man and the family and you know mm. they needed to, to to understand those things now when they when the shubukombe went in the in the olden days he normally went with a small gift maybe a bango uh you know from the elephant's tail uh, elephant's tail bango mm -hmm. kafu, mm -hmm. you know or or even a meso bango if they had one and presented that to say there's a young man who's interested in your daughter uh, of course the other side would all gather because everybody's involved everybody must have an opinion yeah. and they would have the discussion if if that which that was called in salam mm -hmm. uh, and in salam is just the intent to say that oh right uh -huh. mm -hmm. and this is a young lady who they want to you know marry in this house and i'm saying they because it was literally they but even today he cannot go alone no he, he can't, can't he no. can't and yeah. those are the little bits and that pieces still, that are still yes, yeah uh, so ngavasu mina on that side when they agreed it means okay uh kovekera yeah okay. kovekera is 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 really more an intent if we're in engagement, an engagement uh, proverb would be in kovekera uh, yes okay. mm. because Ukukovekela is not marriage, mm -hmm. and even the if the if the engagement broke before the wedding took place, they didn't have to return those gifts that they had brought ah, for them. Okay, okay. That 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 is not imp it's it's important as um as a way of signifying. Mm -hmm. Let me also say this that in terms of uh, in salamu, in pango, and all that, the, the the stages of of actually contracting that marriage. Um, we were not uh, a, a writing society, you know, Back then, in, yeah. in India, the Zambian, most of us, uh, Zambian uh, ethnic groups. So th it was important that every stage of the marriage process is signified. And the way it was signified was through gifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you gave a gift, so they knew at all, validated salam. Mm -hmm. Which is now like what you call Ogola, I suppose. That is also signified by a gift by a gift yeah it was not buying the, the, the person <laughs> it was not <laughs> buying the I'm girl i'm going to come coming to that yes <laughs> unfortunately those things that were just gifts it could have been uh, uh, salt um uh, back cloth sembe, you know things like that mm -hmm. those things at some point and it's very interesting because i i like to go through the records in the in the in the archives I wanted to find out at which point they changed to become money. To, to become money. I was going to ask that. <laughs> yes. At what point did it change? From from from, from, from very little, because they like yes. a gift to to money. To money because yes. in, because there's so much that has been. So it wasn't, and that is, is it why you find um, young men would say no because I paid so much, mm -hmm. therefore mm -hmm. I can do whatever yes. I, I want. Yes. Yeah. So but at the, that so point, the language changed. The language changed. Yes. Yeah. From from toali toali tuara impango to toali dipira. You know what I mean? Ah. <laughs> yeah. Because okay. Okay. Yes. 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 So I, and the whole perception oh, wow. now. Yes, yes. And the whole perception of what that is Sheesh. completely changed. So which is sad because it wasn't a payment, but now yeah, 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 we yeah. all think it's a payment. A payment also can give you ma a power because you are the payer. <laughs> <laughs> over the pay yeah wow. so it, it 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 changed so many dynamics just just by that word by that perception and it's 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 yeah, sad yeah, yeah. actually just even gives me shivers actually the fact that to a little bit yes and i guess and and by just saying the fact that because the kulipula is buying mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. and then if i buy something it's like now i i own it i own it yes as opposed to we took yes Tuali tuala in salam. You don't say tuali lipila. You say tuali tuala. Tuala. We've taken. Yeah, we've taken the gifts. Oh wow. You don't. You're not paying. Mm -hmm. That's why you know the the the, 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 the a, so you don't own the other person. <laughs> you know what I mean. That's why there's a saying that ichupo chamu sana. Ichamu to chava na bene. You know, um, marriage marriage is the thing that brings two people together, but they remain their own individuals mm, yeah mm, mm, mm. because for us life life only exists if yes, you cut your head off you you know so it. each of to chava now then each each of these two have their own lives they're individuals they have their mm. own individual independence 
the marriage just brought them together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you know things like that started changing. There was a lot of other things that that uh, at least in the Bemba custom, a lot of other things that were exchanged gifts, you know, to show the progression of the negotiations. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So there was some, there was some, for example, which is, you know, where, in the olden days when a when a woman gave birth, mm -hmm. you know, after giving birth, there's that, there's the the cloth yeah, that was tied, tied. Yeah. To, to still, to if you can still do it, actually. Yeah, you can, mm -hmm. but I don't see young girls doing it these days, and it's sad. It's sad because, <laughs> because their stomach is like, like, what are you doing? Yeah. You tie it, <laughs> <laughs> and and you don't help your. And then now, your, your, yeah, your but you know, they're, they're not just we're not being clever. So it's a question. I think eventually we're going to be talking about yeah. this. <laughs> if you can't choose that one, use a waist yeah. trainer. I know. Yeah, but, but they don't even kind of because nobody ha more. nobody has nobody is passing that. That's pa yes. That's another thing that's kind of dying. Yeah, but which is very important for 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 young women to to still practice. After you've given birth, it's important to yeah. tie. Yeah, it's um, but even that had a significance in the marriage payments, for example, because there was a there was a part of the pay. Now I'm saying payments, part of the gifts that were given to recognize. It was called the you know inyemba because to recognize that this this girl that we you know we want from you. Mm -hmm came from that that womb mm, mm. and when she came from out of there the mother had to tie her you know so that that gift is specifically to uh, to thank the mother oh wow yeah yeah the, you know and this oh, is wow. the thing this is why like why did i want to hold that <laughs> <laughs> yes I'll, I'll i'll write the whole yeah words. writing yeah down. because um <laughs> in, as we say, ukupa kapundu is, is to have all those things yes. done. Yeah, so that every single process, and with the marriage, the Bemba marriage process takes about 25 years to complete. Yes, you did mention yes, that. Yes, you did mention yes, that. Yes, because yeah. it doesn't just end, you know, you've eaten the beans at the wedding and <laughs> you go. And that's it. No. Uh -huh. Again, this is why the family is involved. <laughs> Even after the wedding, the family is involved because there are certain things everybody watches the marriage uh -huh. you did mention something actually yes. at one of the cultural fridays you said yes. um uh, that and i think it i think it really was very helpful and i wish we could practice it yeah it's uh, like you said there's certain things that can still be yes revived. there must be yeah so one thing you said was that after it was it every three months i don't mm. know how many months that mm. there'll be someone to check up on them mm. just to find out how before things escalate yes. and i think it's like they were like your 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 your, your mentors your marriage yes, mentors were, your marriage your counselors who will be with you Even for much more than that really yeah? much much more than mm. that because because the shibukombe was kind of like the mentor but nachimbusa is the one who had the real kind of power over over the marriage because mm -hmm. she's the one who like the priest in the church she's the one who solemnized the marriage through ukulangembusa mm. because the ukulangembusa is a set of vows that you're actually taking as you're performing. Yes, that's right. Yeah. It's, it's vows. It's, it's a vow of equality. There's a vow of partnership. There's a vow. You're you're vowing that you'll be partners, that you'll be equal, that you'll be. So she's she's the one who solemnizes the marriage. So she has a responsibility over every marriage that she, she solemnizes. Okay. Just to stop you there, can you imagine? Mm. You've just said something very significant. In Mukulangi mm. somewhere there's equality, mm. there's partnership, there's mm. all that. Mm. But do you realize that very few people actually know that? Yes. Yes. And those are the things that we must, we must return because mm. yeah, you have people preaching to us. Yeah, there's no gender. There's no. No, if you look at akankongwa, <laughs> akasamanda, you know the mbusa that we we actually teach. It's equality. It's partnership. It's all those things that actually, you know, even the even our um, the folk the folk stories that mm. you know that we tell about how the first man and first woman when they bumped into each other you know god made them and kind of threw them onto the planet and then one day they bumped into each other when the man tried to take the woman by force she refused she said no i'm your equal and that's in our folk in our folklore can you imagine that? yes so the you know the for, i always tell young women they I come on to a guy, sir, you know <laughs> you are his equal if the first woman, if the third first woman who didn't have anybody just knew that she was 
essentially an equal to this person who was trying to to take her. Mm. Who are you to start some coming to? <laughs> it's you know, there's so much that we can teach our wow. young men and, and women, women. Yes, because the teachings, wow. the teachings there also, you know, very much going into that. But talking about marriage, so you have all these processes. The the other thing element of this, as we said, it's about you're bringing two families, families together. together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, it is that's why we also have those taboos about uh, you know, your contemporaries your your say your husband's brothers and sisters mm -hmm. those ones you can joke with then those ones you can't so there are um, social distances also that you have to keep <laughs> social distancing <laughs> uh, <laughs> that you have to keep around these people uh, mainly also to to, to create areas where there shouldn't be conflict. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, before everybody kind of knows everybody. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yes. Because mm, yes, mm, because mm. you put together before the marriage has even. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. There, there are some of those taboos which you know you might say today everybody's hugging and kissing their son-in-law, whatever the thing is, but that would have happened much later. You know, which is when, yes, the, yes, when yeah. the son in law is now officially just a son, yes, and no longer umopongoshi. So, yeah, so the, 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 there, are, there are reasons why a lot of these practices were, were put there. One is just to keep that conflict, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I can't talk directly to you, I am lessening the, the chances of having the conflict. conflict with you. That's right, yes. that's right, yes, and that's very good. There, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yeah, so there was a lot of that as well where it, it minimized the, the possibility of conflict, conflict or friction or things like that or familiarity familiarity because you lose respect yes <laughs> it brings contempt <laughs> <laughs> familiarity so, yeah yes. so uh -huh. even familiarity and things like that you, you know the, you, there was a space uh, to hold uh, certain relations and things like that wow wow yeah um let me also say that the marriage relationship um, for 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 us, you know, as uh, we've started with the you know engage, engagement and all that stuff, so there was Okokuva, um, which is which is the the point that was also is, it was a time period which was given to the young guy and the girl to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. So that that was actively encouraged, and they, they were given a lot of time to 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 know each other. Yeah, with supervision. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, but by the time that you're doing the, the whole kukuba thing, everybody knew that you're getting married anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it was a little bit more relaxed because, you know, you're getting married. But there would have been certain rituals that would have been performed for the guy to know that he can't sleep with her yet mm -hmm. until, you know, the, the, the appropriate time. But get to know each other before you have sexual relations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because it's important to know each other before you kind of jump into into the because sex can confuse things. <laughs> no, yeah, it can. I mean can. You, you did say a lot of things that yeah, yes. you were like, you know, remember that girl was asking it, what did you say about it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Those things. So <laughs> Yeah, so so the, you know to, to, to kind of just wind it down. There's a lot of traditions that yes have died. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of traditions that we're still observing, you know, we're still chilangamulilos and all that stuff and we're still doing tovale, you know, vari tovalo tovale. We, we're still kind of doing some of those things. Some of the meaning has changed, as, mm -hmm. as we have discussed, because it's now money. They come with 500 kwachas or whatever it is. They don't come with a bank or anymore. Um, so some meanings have changed in the way we do things uh, and in the meaning we even put on those things. Um, some things have died away. You know, mm -hmm. some of the things I described don't happen anymore. Um, in in our tradition, for example, uh, when you got when you, when when the mpango was paid, the young man had to now move to the girl's village. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know that doesn't happen. <laughs> but the the idea there was also to see how well that young man will provide for their daughter to look after yeah. the daughter. Yeah. So, ngavare mana idemen kolo kwa shukuru tebala ima. You know what I mean? <laughs> it becomes like. Mm -hmm. 
Well, our child survived. Uh, yeah. mm. so, <laughs> so there was also the assessment of uh, the capacity of the young man to actually, you know, run a household, be the head of the house, provide for that house, and all that kind of stuff um, before the actual like marriage and wedding and all that. Mm. Because the, the, the man would would stay in that village for maybe a couple of years or something. Really? Yes, because he had to prove at least two seasons. Eh? <laughs> wow. <laughs> two planting seasons that he's, uh, he's, yeah, he can do it. You know, otherwise the child would die. I mean, the only thing that, <laughs> you know, those days it was your hands and the soil and your bow and your arrow that provided for your family. Mm. If you couldn't do those things, then how are you going to support a family? So they had to kind of like look at how is this, you know, if they thought, hmm, now, nah, eh, I think uh, <laughs> they could bring the, the mpango is the thing that they could return. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They could return that and say it to Atasha, but we don't think so. Yeah, this won't work. Well, this won't work. Yeah. You know, um, when you, when, and especially with the conversations that we had at the, uh, at the Coupe's Friday Chills, uh, it's sort of like given a whole new perspective and understanding and i did mention when i was to, when i was sending the broadcast messages mm -hmm. to the coupes girls that um it is very easy uh to criticize or condemn something that you do not understand yeah. or appreciate so yeah. if we can get people to understand whether you will eventually practice it or not yes. it'll be up to you but at least yes. understand the background Absolutely. and the context in which Absolutely. these things were, were performed however you mm -hmm. did mention as well um one of the girls did say that there's just so many rules uh, for women mm. and and I told her I said I, I don't look at them as rules I look at them as guidelines mm. and I, ref I, I made reference with something that you said at the Friday Chill you said in the beginning when when, go when God mm. created uh, man and woman mm. to the man he gave a bow and arrow mm. like you said something mm. that you used yeah but to the woman he gave a stone yeah which represented and Memor no, memory and knowledge memory and knowledge yeah could that be why we tend to think that there's so many rules for women because of that not really mm. the, the, when god in our cosmo cosmology <laughs> when gave, when god gave that stone to the woman what 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 in our cosmology what god said was the most important thing in my creation mm. is relationship okay. because everything exists in a, in a relationship in relationship to something else mm. whether it's the sun you know the rain the flowers everything exists within relationship and the it the the instruction he gave to woman was that it would be your your job to learn as much as possible about relationship mm -hmm. so that you can pass on the knowledge and the skill about relationship to every human being hereafter ah. so that they can actually know how to show up in relationship That's for true. each other for each other yes, yes. that is the, the root of because that is about relationship mm. it's about teaching you the skills of navigating relationship so when he gave the stone it was learn everything about relationship and pass it on the memory of that knowledge store in the stone yeah which is not strange because it is a stone that keeps the memory in your phone yeah oh wow yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh wow yes. oh wow yes. yeah so so you know relationship is the thing that is the important one now if you analyze which i have i have analyzed the songs say mm. which is the is, is where the man and the woman are let me also say this, that Ukulange Mbusa was the marriage ceremony. But when the colonials came and they started taking the men to the mines and you know, all that kind of stuff, it became very difficult to perform those marriage ceremonies for the man and the woman together. Because mm. one was on the copper belt, this one, you know, this one was here. And so you, they couldn't perform for them together. Mm. Which is the thing that has given people ideas that oh, it's only performed for the woman. No, no. okay. Yeah. Kukulanga Mbusa is for both the man and the, the woman. woman. And there are more songs, meaning more instructions, guidelines and rules, Mukulanga Mbusa, for the man than for the woman. Oh wow, oh wow. Yes. I, I bet they... <laughs> no, mm. they don't. Many yeah. more songs directed at the man instructing him than at the woman. 
And, the, and, and this is why we must no, lose some of this. Yes, yes, because we tend to think that, like, <laughs> like I said, is about that it's about no. the woman. No, yes. No, this was another of those things where another culture comes in and forces you to, 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 to edit and to, 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 to change your own um, way of doing things because they have banned it, because they have taken the men away, because they whatever. Mm. So you, you kind of change the, the thing, you know. Um, it, it's it's wow. kind of sad, yeah. Wow. Wow. And wow. so, you know, it's in the olden days, sometimes it would be a, a, a cousin to the, mm. to the man who would take place or, or my own cousin who would kind of perform the other side, just so that I go through the, that they give me the thing, yeah. When I was going through Kurang and Busa, it was a cousin who kind of took did that, yeah, 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 which I'm very grateful for <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> you know I, I might never have gone through it. So yeah, so it's th again that's another thing that we've misinterpreted about at least from my culture. Mm -hmm. There was so much, and a lot of the cultures in Zambia are matrilineal, and a lot of matrilineal cultures, women have much more say and power in the society than patrilineal or patriarchal Patrilio, society. Yes, yeah. Yeah? So we've lost, we've lost, for me that is one of the biggest chunks of, of our culture that we've lost. This, the sense of, of women and their place in society. Yes. We've lost it. Yes. You know, yes. when I, when I, for me, when I saw my grandmother and my, you know, those women just exuded their confidence. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> there, were, there, were, there was, you couldn't, take them down you know what I mean you couldn't they were supremely confident women yes and mm -hmm. I remember reading um, something from a district uh, officer's note saying he says the women here have so much dignity and confidence you know he, yes. he couldn't understand why these women had so much confidence and dignity um, he says I've never seen you know women who are just so confident you know what I mean and when I look at myself and I look at <laughs> you know people my generation and below we're struggling. Yes. We're struggling with just being female and confident. <laughs> <laughs> that is like that, that hurts. That's that's very painful actually yeah. because when you uh with what you have said and, and you know the, the the conversations and also just the place of a woman, mm. it's it's amazing what we have done to ourselves yeah. because we have we've lessened who we are and mm. it's without understanding uh and one of the things that also when you, you did mention that uh, the things, some of the things were taken away. This is not good. This is not good. I just mm -hmm. want to say something very quickly that you had mentioned to us. Even the issue of imbusa, mm -hmm. it was, it was, it was banned. But yeah. we still had to find a way of continuing those things. So there's yeah. nothing um, uh, evil about it. Mm -hmm. It was just that because they could not do it during the day. It was used to be done in the day, yep. but now it was done in the in the night for the because it had yeah. to be hidden yeah it had to it, it, it had, had to, to be, be hidden, hidden yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, but also yeah because for example you know the, which is which was for the girl and when i'm saying the chisum ceremony also i think has been misunderstood because maybe this is where there are too many rules for the girl mm -hmm. and it is mm -hmm. but the tradition of bemba girl you went through the Chisung not because they were teaching you to be subservient or anything no, like that. Like that. No. There were so many things that uh, um, the woman, the Bemba woman traditionally, was the high priest in the home. Yes. She, she had to take care of all the sacred uh, rituals in the home, the prayers, the everything. She was the priest. Because for us, religion was a domestic issue. It wasn't, you didn't go to church. Home was the church. Yes. And the priest was the woman. Mm. And if you're going to teach the priest, you have to take more time, <laughs> you know, because she has to understand her relationship to, 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 to nature, to, you know, how does she interact with God's creation, mm. in fact, yeah, and her life and the lives that have gone past, she, that was her thing. There are songs about that, there are songs about relationship to your mother, relationship to government, mm. relationship, yes, because because you had to have oh wow you know a rounded wow. thing you you are important huh? that's why you know the name for the waist beads is the same as the, 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 the that ring that they put in the in the roof to hold up the roof because you held up the roof of the home yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it, it, you know it, it's it's not it's not to sub 
press you or what? <laughs> that way to empower you. Yes, to empower you. Empower you in your role in, oh, wow. in, in society. Yes, and wow. it, that that wasn't you know it, it, we tend to I don't know and this is what culture does. Another culture can come and put the lens, their lens over, your, over eyes your eyes and make you look at your culture from their lens, and then you start judging. But you know why do we do this? Why do we even do this? Culture, another thing I didn't say, culture is very judgmental. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Culture will look at another the, the minute you walk into South Africa you say, Yeah, I'm to Akuno. Mm -hmm. You know <laughs> why are they dressed like that? Yes. yes. Yeah. Why do, you judge, 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 judge. You have to and sometimes for me anyway, I I immediately become conscious I'm judging, you know. <laughs> and I stop it. But uh, culture is very judgmental. Mm. It, it 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 values things and views things from its own perspective. But sometimes it can give you its perspective. And from that perspective, you start judging yourself. Oh, wow. And that's what we have been doing for a long time. Sheesh. Oh, my goodness. I, I, we could go on. Okay. And <laughs> on and on and on. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Like, there's just so much I want to, to, to ask. And I'm sure even anybody who's watching us right now is probably thinking, I want to ask more. What about that? What about that? <laughs> and we, we will have another opportunity to, 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 to do this. Perhaps maybe not immediately. We don't know. Mm. Um, but there's some things that we, we discussed yeah. with, we, you know, that we would like to do. Probably Absolutely. even package. Yeah. Uh, and somebody can actually make reference to it quickly Absolutely. and say this Absolutely. is what. And, and this is also part of what <laughs> the Women's History Museum wants to do because you know, with the fight in the Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these things are that for us Africans, we'll also have to start bringing this out. Like yes, this. Uh -huh. if you and I talk about it and we we actually say it and and it's provable, it becomes a reference point for somebody else to be able to refer to. That, yes, which is missing is so much for the li for the lion. You know, the hunter has yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. Has this story sorted out? But we need to be doing that. We so you know, I'm stories. I am very happy and open to. I am so excited. Yeah, yeah. Doing something like this because mm -hmm. it helps to to establish those and document some of these things that we don't know. Okay. And the others don't know, but they can also use as a reference. As for, a reference for their yes, own, yes. yeah, for their own knowledge. Okay, Hanchman, it's been an absolute pleasure. Like I've just so much that I want to <laughs> say. I just want to say thank you. And thank you. And we'll, we'll keep some of our private conversation <laughs> private. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so here we are. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Madam Lenga Kapwepo, it's been absolutely um, amazing. And one of the things that we've spoken about here is, you know, for as long as we, if you don't understand something, it's very easy, um, you know, easy to, 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 to judge and to criticize uh, and to condemn. So the, the conversation here today has been simply to, to open up the, yes. you know, the Pandora's yeah, box absolutely. more and more yeah. so we can unpack. But one thing that is very key here is that we have been fighting for uh, gender, whatever, mm, gender equality, mm, women mm. empowerment. Uh, we have forgotten that we have already been empowered from yep. the get-go. Yep. And this, these conversations are very important because then they, they, they take us back. And just it's just a question of reminder. Yeah. Just remind you that you are already powerful, but then how then do we manifest that? And then how do we package it? Uh, for today's for today's young women, women for yeah. today's young women yeah. um and one thing that i always say to the kupes girls is that mm -hmm. uh, but that can only start happening if it starts from the home mm -hmm. and people to really start you know highlighting the you know the beauty of a woman and the magnificence of a woman and Absolutely. all that so i pray that we, we 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 get to 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 that level so mm -hmm. Uh, so we've come to the end of the of the, of the kupes chat it's been absolutely amazing i would like to um to say thank you to, to, to Saroba Hotel, our partners, as well as um, uh, MTN Zambia and uh, Fortress Media. And one of the things that I would like to go away with today is just the fact that um, for until we get to a place as women, until we realize how powerful we are, um, it will be very, um, is a day actually, we will not want to compare ourselves, first of all, to another woman, or to the other gender. So even when we're talking about women empowerment, it's not for us to have power over the man, mm -hmm. but for us to realize that we already have that power and it's time for it to, to manifest. So I hope you've had a wonderful time and uh, we shall see you next time. Have a fantastic day.